Okay, this problem is using specific identification. Um, so this is the next problem in my open math. And you can see here that this problem looks a little bit different. It's still giving you your beginning inventory, right? It's giving you some purchases. It's giving you some sales. Um, but it's just giving you some additional information. And with specific identification, it's different than FIFO and LIFO. You're not going to assume the first ones that came in were the first ones out, the first ones sold, or the last ones that came in were the first ones sold. With specific identification, they have to specifically identify or specifically tell you which ones were sold or which ones you still have left, and then you can back into which ones were sold. And so um, also with this one, you'll see it's not asking you for the gross profit. It's only asking you for the total cost of goods sold for the month and then the inventory for the month. And that is because in this problem, they did give you sales. You sold 13 units, but they didn't tell you how much you sold them for. So in the other two problems, it gave you the number of units sold and the sales price. So you could figure out the total sales. This particular problem doesn't give you the sales price. So that's why it's not asking you for the gross profit. But in my example, um, we're using the exact same example that we did for the LIFO and FIFO. And so I, I did give you the unit sales. So we are going to fill in the gross profit just for extra practice. Okay, it's the exact same calculation. Um, and so let's dive right into this one under specific identification. Again, it's the exact same problem. So again, I'm going to start off with my beginning inventory. This is what I had left over from the end of the last month. And um, the only, re only time you need these additional instructions under specific, specific identification is when you have a sale. Um, and so we won't look at these until we get down to the sales things. Everything else is the same. When you make a purchase, um, the only thing that's different is when you make a sale. And so again, I'm going to start off my inventory on hand with my beginning inventory. I made a purchase of 70 units at $26 a piece. So I'm just going to bring that down. And again, make sure you're bringing these down in the correct order. It's important to keep your inventory on hand in the order that they came in, no matter which method you're using. Um, and so I start off with my beginning inventory and I add the units that I just purchased, 70 units at $26 a piece. So after this purchase, um, the, the items I have on hand are highlighted there in pink. Okay, and so now we have a sale, right? And I'm going to highlight this in pink. It says we sold 80 units at $35 a piece, but again, that's how much we sold them to the customer for. So we have to figure out how much those 80 units cost us under the specific identification method this time. So again, with specific identification, we're not going to choose the first ones in where the first ones out or the last ones in where the last ones out like we did with FIFO and LIFO. It's going to have to give us some additional information. It's going to have to tell us which of these items that we have available here in pink did we sell? Okay, so if you look at the additional instructions for specific identification, I'm going to highlight this in pink as well. This is telling us of the 80, 80 units that were sold on January 8th, right? That's the 80 units that we're looking at. 45 of them were sold from the beginning inventory. So it's specifically identifying these 80 units that were sold, which batch was, did they come from? Did they come from the beginning inventory or did they come from the items that we just purchased? So it says 45 of the 80 units that we sold came from the beginning inventory. And so I can key that in, right? 45 units, the beginning inventory cost me $24 a piece. And then if you keep reading, it says 35 of them were sold from the January 5th purchase. And so that's the purchase here at $26 a piece. So 35 at $26 a piece. And always just add these two together to make sure you're coming up with the total number of units um, that were sold. So it says 80, and when you add 45 and 35 together, you're coming up to 80. Because you, you have to account for the total number of units, and hopefully the instructions are correct. But people make mistakes, um, even people that write the problems. So make sure you're just adding up, make sure you're accounting for everything. So again, they're specifically telling you which units were sold. It's not first in, first out. It's not last in, first out. It's specific identification this time. So now you have to figure out after the sale, what do we have left, right? I had 160 units and I just sold 45 of them. So I've got 115 left at $24 a piece. And I had 70 units that I had purchased on January 5th, and it says I sold 35 of those. So I've got 35 of those left at $26 a piece. So after that sale, I've got these items listed here in green. Okay? So again, it's not FIFO, it's not LIFO. They're going to specifically tell you which ones you sold. Or it could have just as easily told me which one, 
uh, what I have left, right? It could have told me I had 115 after the sale, I had 115 at 24 and 35 at 26 left, and you could have backed into what you sold. The way it did it, it told us what we sold and we backed into what we have left. All right, so again, the next item is just a purchase. That's exactly the same as the other two methods we've already gone over. So I have purchased 45 units at $27 a piece. And again, when I'm figuring out now what I have on hand after this purchase, make sure you're bringing them down in exactly the same order that they came in. So you're keeping track of your beginning inventory, then I have this January 5th um, purchase, and now I've got this January 15th purchase that I'm just going to bring over. So after this transaction, after this purchase, I have these items here in, let's do orange, in orange. Okay. And my next transaction, again, is another purchase. So I purchased 25 more items at $28 a piece. So again, after this transaction, I have to figure out what I have on hand. Again, make sure you're bringing them down in the order that they appeared before. You're just bringing them down. And you're adding to it what you just purchased. So that's the last one, $25 at $28 a piece. So after this transaction, after this purchase, this is the inventory that I have on hand to be sold. Let's do that in teal. All right, so now my next transaction is a sale, right? I sold 60 more units. So again, it's not LIFO or FIFO anymore this time. They're going to have to specifically identify which units I sold. And so I'm going to highlight that in teal as well. So the sale here matches the sale here in the same color. So pink and pink and teal and teal. So it says, of the 60 items that were sold on January 25th, that's the transaction I'm on right now, right? Of these 60 items, 30 were sold from the beginning inventory. So I can come down here to my cost of goods sold column for January 25th, and I can say 30 of them were sold from my beginning inventory. Those cost me, my beginning inventory cost me $24 a piece. And five of them were sold from January 5th. So five and my January 5th purchase cost me $26 a piece, right? January 5th, these items cost me 26. And 10 of them were sold from the January 15th purchase. So January 15th, those items cost me $27 a piece and I sold 10 of those. And then 15 were sold from January 22nd purchase, this purchase that we just made. So 15 at $28 a piece because that's how much they cost me. And again, I'm going to add all these together. 30 plus 5 gives me 35 plus 10 more gives me 45 plus 15 more gives me 60. And that's how many it says I sold. Okay. So now if I added these all together, those 60 units, I can say cost me $1,540 um, when I sell, sell them. That's how much they costed me when I, when I bought them. I'm going to turn around and sell them for $35 a piece. Okay, so again, it's specifically telling me 30 of them were sold from beginning inventory. So you just fill in the number of units and you look back up and see how much your beginning inventory cost you and you bring that down, the unit cost. Five of them were sold from January 5th. So you put in five and you look at the January 5th purchase and they cost you $26. So then you fill in the unit cost there and you just do the math, five times 26. Ten of them were sold from the January 15th. January 15th items cost me $27. I sold 10 of them at 27. And then 15, the last 15 were sold from the January 26th purchase. So 15 at 28. So now what we need to do is figure out what we have left, right? And I'm, I've got them in, in the same order here. So 115 at 24 is what I had before the sale. And it says I sold 30 of those. So I've got 85 of those left at $24 a piece. Then I had 35 of these ones at $26 a piece, and I sold five of them, so I've got 30 of those left at $26. I had 45 at the $27 a piece, right? I sold 10 of those, so I've got 35 of those left at $27 each. And I had 25, and I sold 15, so I've got 10 of those left at $28 a piece. So after the sale of these 60 units, the items that I have on hand now Let's do this in this um, kind of brown khaki color. The items that I have on, on hand now after this sale are these right here. I have some left from the beginning inventory. I've got some left from January 5th purchase. I've got some left from the January 15th purchase and some left from the January 22nd purchase. All right, now I've got another sale. My last transaction for the month was another sale. That's kind of hard to read. Let me do that in a different color. 
Let me do it in bright yellow. It'll be easier to read. So I sold 100 more units. And again, you're going to have to look for the instructions because it's going to have to specifically identify which of these 100 units were sold, right? Because I've got all of these left. I've got um, 160 units left. But they're going to have to specifically tell me which ones are sold because they each have different costs. And so it says, of the 100 units that were sold on January 31st, 85 of them were sold from the beginning inventory, right? So 85 and the beginning inventory cost me $24 a piece. Five of them were sold from January 5th. And so five, the January 5th ones cost me $26. So just bring down that unit cost. And 10 of them were sold from the January 22nd purchase. 10. And so we didn't sell any this time from January 15th. It says the last one, those last 10 were sold from January 22nd. So the ones from January 22nd cost me $28 a piece. And so again, if I add these up, 85 and 5 is 90 and 10 makes 100. So that's accounting for all 100 that I sold. Um, and then I have to figure out what I've got left, right? After this transaction, after these 100 units are sold, how many units do I have left? All right, I had 85 at 24 and I sold all 85 of those. So I'm not going to bring down that beginning inventory. Then I had 30 at 26. I sold five of those. So what I've got 25 of those left. I had 35 at 27, but I didn't sell any of those. So I've got all of those left. And I had 10 at 28, but I sold all of those. So I don't have any of those left. So my ending inventory at the end of the month, let's do this in purple are these items in purple here, right? So my total at the end let me move this over um, is going to be these items added together because I've got 25 items that, that cost me $26 a piece for a total of $650 and I've got 35 items that cost me $27 a piece for a total of $945. So when I add those two together I come up with total ending inventory under the specific identification method of $1,595 and that represents the 60 units that are left, right? And then I have to come up so I can fill that in for my ending inventory. If I looked at my balance sheet, that's the amount of ending inventory I should have under specific identification. And then I have to add up all of my cost of goods sold. I sold, right, I sold 80 units on the 8th, 60 units on the 25th, and 31 units, I'm sorry, 100 units on the 31st. And so if I add all of those costs together for all 240 units that I sold, I've got a total cost of goods sold for those 240 units of $5,980. Um, and so again, all I'm doing is adding down all of these numbers here to come up with total cost of goods sold for the month. Because so, each one of these is just telling me my cost of goods sold for those particular units. I need to know what my cost of goods sold for the whole month was. And I sold a total of 240 units, so make sure that you're calculating all that. So I can fill that in for my cost of goods sold. And under my math, you'd be done. But let's go ahead and do the sales and the gross profit just to um, just have the extra practice. Oh, and one more thing. Let's do the cost of goods available for sale again and double check that. So I'm going to add my beginning inventory plus all my purchases to get my total cost of goods available for sale, right? Cost of goods available for sale, not, not cost of goods sold, cost of goods available for sale. And I am going to add my cost of goods sold for the month plus my ending inventory at the end of the month, and it should come back to agree, right? $7,575 my cost of goods available, available for sale and $7,575 is my cost of goods sold plus my ending inventory. So the two agree. So that means all my math that I did here should be correct. All right, so my total sales for the month, I sold 80 units at $35 a piece. I sold 60 units at $35 a piece, and I sold 100 units at $35 a piece. So my total uh, unit sold was 240 units at $35 each. So it's going to give me total sales of $8,400 for the whole month. We've already calculated our cost of goods available for sale is $5,980 under the specific identification method. And so when I subtract the, the $5,980 from the $8,400 for the sales, I get gross profit of $2,420.
Okay, so that's specific identification. And again, you're going to have to do these calculations on um, a separate piece of paper. The only thing my math is asking you for are these numbers here. If I pull that back up, you just have to plug the number in. It's going to tell you if you're right or wrong. So having this double check number is going to be very important. Okay.